Anthracite coal mining began in northeastern Pennsylvania in the early 1800s. By the 1920s, when this movie was filmed, mines dotted the mountainous landscape from Scranton to Mock Chunk and at many small coal towns in between. Miners worked hard. They were up early and spent their days underground in dark chambers and shafts carved into thick seams of anthracite coal. Mining was physically demanding and dangerous, but with families to support, the men accepted the job's terms. Miners came to work with lunch and water pails made of tin. Their first stop was at the change house. Miners wore thick clothes to stay warm in the chilly mines where temperatures year-round were about 48 degrees. Clothing became black from coal soot each day. The miners' next stop was a shack where they checked in at the start of the day and checked out when the day was over. They also picked up their identification tag. By checking the placement of the pegs, a supervisor knew who was underground and who was at home. The next stop was at the blacksmith building where workers chose the right pick for a day of chipping black anthracite. Picks had to be sharp to crack the hard stone. Some miners were responsible for getting dynamite and fuses for the day's blasting. This miner gets a whole shoulder load of TNT. Light in the mines came from lamps. In the 1800s, miners wore small lamps on their caps that burned whale oil. Battery-operated lamps replaced them as technology improved. The real work got underway when miners loaded into small cars that were lowered into the mine on small rail tracks. A heavy steel cable attached to heavy chains slowly lowered the miners through the mine opening and down to the depth of the active coal seams. Some mines had steel elevators that took the men far underground. Anthracite is formed from plants that grew hundreds of millions of years ago when Pennsylvania was a tropical land dominated by shallow seas and large swamps. Coal formed in thick layers that were pushed upward during periods of mountain building. Many seams were pushed close to the surface. Hardwood forests near the coal mines provided trees that were cut into sections and used to bolster the mine shafts. Cave-ins were frequent, but mines that were heavily buttressed suffered fewer accidents. Logs were cut at sawmills next to the mine and taken down on rail cars. Just look at the number of logs supporting this mine shaft. Imagine the weight above those logs. Miners faced many dangers. Underground gases, such as methane, caused fires and explosions that often led to cave-ins. Gas collected along walls and ceilings and sometimes shot out of cracks in invisible streams called blowers. Mines were ventilated, but gas was always a threat. Working areas were checked before miners were allowed in. Blasting disengaged large amounts of coal from a seam. Workers prepared for the blast by drilling long holes into the seam and then stuffing the holes with enough dynamite to break the coal from the walls, but not too much to cause a cave-in. Once the fuse was lighted, workers cleared the area to avoid being hurt. After the blast, the area was examined to make sure that there were no large sections of coal hanging on the wall or ceiling by a thread. Situations like that posed a serious threat to working miners. Loose sections were pulled down or, if necessary, a second smaller blast was done to break the coal free. Workers took their time to make sure the working area was safe. Once the area was declared safe, other workers moved in to collect the coal. 
Carts were brought in to hold the coal. Large pieces were loaded by hand and the smaller pieces and particles by large shovels. When the carts were full, the workers pushed the cart to a rail track and it was rolled to a location where the coal was dumped into a large holding bin. Here you see a bellows mechanism going back and forth to bring air into the mine. Mules that lived in underground stables pulled large cars to a chute underneath the holding bin. Mules were strong and smart and knew their way around the mine. When the car was full, the mule pulled it down a track where it was coupled with other cars that were loaded and waiting to be taken out of the mine. Anthracite coal was black and shiny and became Pennsylvania's most valuable natural resource. In the early years of coal mining, mules pulled the cars from the mines. Watch your head. By the 1920s and 30s, small engines were doing the job. In mines with steep entrances, steel cables connected to powerful engines pulled the cars along the final length of track and out into daylight. The next step was to get the coal into the breaker house or colliery. Cars were taken up a steep slope to the top of the tall breaker. The coal was dumped. When a car was empty, it was sent back down into the mine to be loaded again. Another car would be pulled up and the process would be repeated all day long. Coal was broken into various sizes at the top of a breaker house and sent down iron chutes to workers below. The workers separated slate and other rocks called culm from the coal. The column was taken to an area outside the breaker and dumped in large piles. Miners' families used to search the piles for pieces of coal that were used in home stoves and furnaces. Groundwater was a problem in mines. It seeped into the mine shafts and chambers and had to be removed by pumps or water elevators. For every ton of coal a mine produced, it also produced about 8 or 10 tons of water. Sorting coal was a tough job. Until child labor laws were passed, the sorting was done by young breaker boys who sat on narrow benches under the watchful eye of a breaker boss who would smack the lads with a thick stick if they slowed down or talked to a friend. Older men and teenage boys took over after laws were written that prevented children from doing the work. After leaving the breaker house, coal was loaded onto railroad cars and delivered to industries all over the region. Here, the Lehigh Valley Railroad is taking a long train of coal cars south, perhaps to Bethlehem and its giant steel mills. Leaving the mine at the end of the day always brought smiles to the workers' faces. Waiting at home was a bath, a hot meal, and a family. But as one shift ended, another began. Coal mining was a tough, dangerous business, but without it, America never would have become an industrial giant.